So this is what the software looks like. Uh, this is what the interface of the software look like. And this is my PVC. So let me close this work. Okay, so if you if you open the software, you um I don't know where you saved it. Let's say PVC. This is mine, 7.2, version 7.2. You click it open, you can right click on it and say save uh, pin to start or pin to tax bar. The idea of pinning it is. Um, if you pin it to taskbar, you can easily see it on your taskbar, or you see it on at your. Uh, anytime you click on the window key, it will pop up. So every software I use frequently, you can, you can always pin it there. So this is the overview of the software. Uh, this is the title bar. Uh, these are the menu bars. So like the, this is file menu. It has option for you to um, export, import. And exit the software. The next is the preliminary design menu, and it specified the three uh, aspects of design that can be carried out with this software. And that is the grid connected system with eight variants. The grid connected system has about three to four variants. Then you have, depending on the configuration, depending on whether you are feeding into this, the grid. Depending on whether you are you have a hybrid system, a standby hybrid system, depending on whether there's a central inverter, remember whether there is a, is a, is a, is a uh, different variant. And I think we did it on the, on the first day. Then the second one is the standalone system. The standalone system is uh, it's not grid tied, it's just a solar system that is on its own with your PV system, with your PV panels with your batteries and your DC load for this DC um, system. Then for the AC system, the alternate current system, you have your inverter. It's just the inverter just what, cost, what brings in the difference. Good. Then you now have the hybrid, which Njachima was trying to focus on yesterday, um, whereby you combine with generator, you combine with diesel. That hybrid system is gaining popularity because it is being understood uh, it's, beginning, it's coming over us that um, in most application, solar alone is not self-sufficient. The reason being that the Nigerian factor or the developing country factor. In developed countries, it is never an issue. You don't need a generator. You don't need a hybrid system. You just need your, your, your grid connected system because the grid is reliable. The grid is a smart grid. When we say smart grid, Smart grid means you can, you know, our, our grid in Nigeria is not smart because you can only receive electricity or you cannot give back into the grid. But in a smart grid system, you can actually get electricity. And when you are generating with your solar panel, you can give back to the system and you'll be paid for it. Okay. And then you can also communicate the, the grid. Your, your controller can also communicate with the grid. Like, like we said yesterday, when, there's a, when the grid is not, is when the grid is down, it will not give electricity to the grid because that will not count. And then it's also communicate to know when the solar radiation is poor, then it will take some units from the grid and service some of your units. And then when it has it is fully charged, the, the controller will automatically communicate to the grid and say, okay, I'm going to give you load. It will start giving him giving the grid load. And all these things will be captured, documented, and it will be it will be real time. That is why it's a smart grid. Good. Then the last one is the pumping. Pumping, of course, is not grid connected and it has its own uniqueness, it has its own speciality. The other menu is the project menu. So just like we said, uh, it could be new, new grid connected, standalone pumping and a direct current grid. Then setting is where you do your settings. The language is where you set your language, which is English especially. Then you have the line sense. As I said, if you, if you so install the software, you have 30 days to use the software. After that 30 days, you'll be asked to go for the line sense uh, version. And also for the free version, the result, the result that will be generated will be curtailed. It should not be the full result that you get if you are not using the um, 
the license one. So that is just the disadvantage of free things. And I think all of us know that um, nothing is free as part, uh, as part to talk. But um, for the 30 days we have, I think we can make do with it. Okay, so then this is the pumping. Uh, oh, okay. Then you come, sir, yes? Okay. I can hear you, sir. How much is the license? How much is the license? It's about $800. A year. Oh. Yeah. Huh? $800. $800 dollars per year. That would be if you have a project that will pay for yeah. it, sir. Yeah, it's worth it. Others are more expensive. Yeah. There are many other ones, especially Canadian ones. Okay. Sorry to but is the license is it an annual thing? You renew her? Yes. Okay. It is. Okay. And then also the pumping issue, you keep talking about pumping, would it, but it was not mentioned yesterday. What's, what difference does it make pumping? What's it, what's it about, really? Um, pumping configuration is a little bit different from the configuration of standalone in the sense that, um, you know, like for instance, in pumping, you don't need battery. Um, you don't need battery, you don't need inverters because uh, the submersible foam pump has its own mechanism. Then is a, is a simpler, is, 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 is quite, is a, is a, is different from the two in the sense that you don't need a battery, you don't need inverters. So it's just, uh, it's more like direct pumping, direct current. You're using, unless you're using um, an, an AC motor, but most configuration normally uses um, DC motors. So that's the difference here. Then the next thing you have on the interface, I hope that's okay with you, sir. Then but with time you see all these things. The, the, uh, this is the three things you can do with the software. Then the other one is your utilities. In these utilities, we have the databases. The databases is the database giving you the sun radiation, the, the azimuth, and the local condition, the weather condition in terms of weather, uh, winter or summer. So for you to do your design, you need to go to the database and call up the location. The location of where you are doing the design. You are doing design in Mina or in Brunu or in Lagos. The sun peak hour is uh, peak sun hour is different. The database automatically give you the details of that area, give you a rundown of the parameters to use. Then we have tools. Uh, these tools, somebody asked a question yesterday about um, manufacturers and uh, vendors. These two will also give you an idea of some of the manufacturers and vendors you have in the market. Then the, and the other one is measure data. Sometimes you can measure your own data. You can also have your own information. Okay, you can build in Excel your own input parameters, which you can use. Then the last one is the documentation, the frequency asked questions, and the video tutorial. One thing I want to say is this. What we are doing this morning, today, sorry, is to give you an overview of this software. In fact, basically to introduce you, it's more like an introduction of what the software can do. Then I think uh, later on, um, you can explore the software, uh, watching some of the videos, it has videos, and then it has documentation. You can click on documentation and it will open a whole lot of tutorials for you, depending on what you want to do. Okay, so, So this is the software. The software is an is from is made is, is made from Switzerland. Currently, it is version seven point two now. When I when I did this thing, it was it was still in version seven. Now we have seven point two. Uh, this has the name. Then um, here, uh, what we're going to do is to look at the general description. We will look at the the tools and software interface. Then we look at the project design. The, the, the first thing you do is to do a preliminary design. We do a preliminary design. The software will check your design and then give you recommendation. After that, you cannot go and do your final design. In fact, that is what uh, using computer software does. Basically, as I said yesterday, some of this software that we do will say software, software, software. Every software is for modeling and simulation. I keep emphasizing it. It is you, the engineer, that will do the design. It is you that will do the load calculation. In fact, if you have done the load analysis, then you've done the design basically. So it's a software package for study, 
sizing and data analysis of complete PV design. It deals with grid connected, standalone pumping and grid PV systems, and so on and so forth. So it, it does preliminary design, project design, simulation, then it gives you databases and it gives you utilities. This is what the interface looks like. Okay, uh, the first thing you do is your preliminary design, uh, which is like precising of a project. Okay, uh, what the system does here is to give you a rough estimate of the system cost. And this can be used for the grid, the standalone and the pumping. So um, for the grid connected system, the system is linked to the grid. Uh, it works as an, an unlimited consumer. For the standalone system, uh, thorough design using detailed hourly simulation. So for the thorough design, for the standalone systems, is more of giving you a detailed hourly simulation, which you're gonna see shortly. The, the material data gives you uh, how to create and manage your site, general hourly data, visualization of meteorological data, comparison, import, and so on and so forth. Then the component database is database management. It gives you a database of manufacturers of the PV components, including the PV modules, the inverters, the regulators, the controllers, the generators, the pumps, and every other thing. I think this is more like a business uh, aspect of it. The software has captured some big time um, manufacturers. Then you have the tools, and then you have the measured data. Okay, so the software comes in three forms, which I've already explained. The evaluation mode, the, the demo mode, and then the license mode. So we're automatically using both the evaluation mode and the demo mode. Okay, we're using the evaluation mode. So after 30 days, the evaluation mode will revert to the demo mode, uh, except you find a way and re-download it again using a different ID. Okay, so what we're gonna do next? Any question, any question before we proceed? Any question? So this is the, let's review what we did yesterday, um, which is basically sizing. Let's review what we did. So you've gone for the load analysis. Um, so this is the load, one television, one days. So when we finished, we did the calculation and just take note of the variables. For the inverter, the total load, our total load is 4,000 watt hour. 4,000 watt hour, remember we multiply the quantity times the power rating. Okay, forget about the quantity, the power rating multiplied by the hour of operation will give you the total energy requirement. Then you multiply by the number of equipment in that house or you want to do, you now get the total. Then when you sum it up, you now get your total energy requirement in what hour per day. So in this case, it's 4,000, okay? Therefore, we said that our inverter size, using a power factor of 0 0.8, there's no problem with that, we've discussed power factor. Power factor most times is 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8. And then the desired load factor. We also desire this load factor. We assume that you give a buffer of 30%. If per adventure there's any additional load, then it can go to 80%, it can be accommodated. You don't assume 100% because if you assume 100% and suddenly there's change in use, there's change in uh, requirements, or maybe the owner goes and buys extra equipment, then your system will fail. So it is good for you to give that, uh, have a, a load factor of between 70% uh, and 90%. I don't know what the Nigerian code talks about, but in other engineering design, this is what is applicable. So when we finish, we found out that our inverter size is 455 kVA. Good. Then we went further and went to our battery. So the first thing is inverter. We've sized our inverter. 
the next thing is to size our battery. So the daily energy need based on the hour of operation is 4,000 watt hour or four kilowatts hour, four kilowatt hour. Then we made an assumption, which is on the high side anyway, that the days of autonomy, days of autonomy is uh, a days that your system can run without sunlight or with minimum, minimum sunlight. In other words, the days that the battery will be on, will be working, we, see, we assume three days. And that brings our design to 12,000 watt hour, 12,000 12, watt hour or 12 kilowatts. So the daily need is 4,000 kilowatts, but the backup system or the battery system we're going to design for is times three, because we are looking at three days of using that battery. So how do we go about it? We also assume that we are using a lead acid battery, which has a depth of discharge of 50%. Somebody asked me yesterday, this depth of discharge is also a safety measure to protect the battery from the over discharging. Because every battery has what they call, um, uh, it has a, every battery have a circle, okay? So if it's a 1000 circle battery, after charging it for more than 1000 times, then the battery should, be, should pack up. So, but this DOG now is like saying, as soon as the battery goes to 50%, I will recharge my battery. So using those, these two parameters, we now went to size our battery and that battery becomes 12,000 divided by 24. Okay, 12,000 divided by 24. That is how you got about, we got the 24,000 watt hour because of the type of battery we are using. That is what made it this. Okay, so after that, we now decide to design our battery. And um, since energy um, power is the rate of um, the rate of doing work, that's power. That's the, that which is energy over time, E over T. Okay, so by the time you now make E, the subject of the formula, E becomes power times time. And that is how the batteries are rated. So when you look at power times time, you isolate the, if the current aspect of it, multiply by time, you now have your ampere hour. So your energy now becomes the voltage times the ampere hour. And that becomes the rating of your battery. So using that in mind, we can now um, evaluate the size of our battery. Okay. Okay. Then the solar array, we said, you size your solar array uh, based on the capacity of your battery. Uh, good, uh, yes, sorry, sir. sir. Sorry, yeah. sir. Hello. Hello. We can hear you, sir. Hello, sir. We, we can hear you, sir. Can you, can you, can you, uh, yeah, can you throw more light on, can you throw more light on this ampere hour, this ampere hour? Throw more, okay. more light a little bit. Okay, Let me. Um, Uche, do you mind if I come in and say something? Here? Okay. Okay. No problem. Okay. So, uh, so you're asking about the AH, which represents amp, amp hour. So, um, when you're using electricity, what you're actually consuming is the amps. That's what you're consuming. Voltage is something that pushes the amp, just like the pressure that pushes water through your pipe. In, in the case of water, so what you're actually consuming is the amps. Okay. So amp hour is how many amps you're going to consume in one hour? How many um, amps that battery can give you in one hour? So when you see a rating of 200 amp hour, what that means you can get 200 amps in one hour from that battery and that's all it can give. Okay, the V that you're seeing is just the voltage. The voltage is what, can, what pushes that amp, okay? For you to be able to have it. I'm just trying to explain it in the simplest way as possible. I don't know if that makes sense to you. Okay. Yeah, in some context, we just allow amp to go uh, when we are doing calculation that has to do with power V times I. But when you now come, I begin to say, V ampere hour and all that. So I wanted to be very clear. 
what we're talking about. But I know it's something that is, uh, yeah, you know, but it's okay. Okay, okay, okay. Hello? Just yes. essentially trying to, is it written? Essentially trying to let you know how many amps you can get within one hour from that battery. Mm. Mm. So it's limiting, mm. it's limiting yeah. it to an hour, yes, yeah. Okay. Uh, can I continue? Okay. Thank Go you. ahead, sir. Okay. Um, can you see what I'm typing? And uh -huh. I'm, I'm seeing what you are typing. Uh, good. So um, I don't know that would, that would add value. That would further explain that. The... Uh -oh. Okay, good. So what I'm trying to emphasize, uh, just want to share my collaborator now. The, the, the batteries are, are, even the battery you use for your phone is rated ampa hour, which is, I think the latest now is about 10,000 amp hour. Okay. Milli, yeah. Sorry, milliampa. Milli. Can, can you put the VI in brackets so that to be clearer? VI, okay. 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 Yes. Thank you. And you know too well that when you see kilowatt hour too, it's almost, you know, this is energy. And that is what you pay for. So when you buy battery, you're also buying the content, the energy content of the battery, but rated in one hour. What, what energy content can the battery give you in one hour? I think that's just the difference. Okay, let's continue. So after doing this, so, um, okay. If you, I'm sorry, did I start recording? Okay, let me go with one. So now, we the battery size we need is 24, 24 um, watt hour, okay? So if you now want to know um, which is 24 kilowatt, uh, kilowatt hour, okay? So if you now want to, um go for that you now go and design the pv array okay because the pv array is what is going to charge the the battery so the input how about the number of batteries the number of batteries that we need the number of battery we need is now you divide this by the by the type of battery you are, you are buying for you are you are going for so like this one now, let me go back. So from here now, which battery are you using? Are you using one, um, 100 ampa battery or 200 ampa battery? That's the next question. Are you with me? So if you're using- We can assume, we can assume 200 amp hour. Okay, if you're using 200 amp hour, then you now divide, this is 24 kilowatt hour, 24 watt hour, which is what you need in one hour. And then this, um, this battery is giving you um, 200. Hello? I'm with you, sir. I'm with you. We can hear you. We can hear you. Go ahead. Okay. I hear you. So you now divide it by the rating of the battery, and that will give you the number of battery you need. Is it sorry? Is it only by the rating of the battery or by the voltage of the battery also? The rating and the, the voltage the, of the battery. Is it from this formula we have here? If you multiply, this is the voltage now. So the ampere yeah. hour here is AH. So if you now exactly. come here, it depends on the equipment you're powering. Let's say we are powering a 48 volt uh, equipment. So that becomes 48 multiply by um, the battery now is um, AH. What do you call AH? Which is now equal to the 2400. Are you with me? So if you now make um, AH, the subject of the formula, 
That will be 2,400 divided by 48 multiply by 100. So I don't know what that will give us. Can somebody calculate it? Okay, let me do the calculation. Why do you multiply by why do you multiply by 100? Because the, the, the battery is we're using okay, you said 200. Okay. If it's 200, you change it to 200. If it's 100, the battery okay. configuration. Okay. That's why in all the exercises, we didn't it's five batteries. We didn't uh, um give you the number of battery and we didn't give you the number of PV panel because we don't know the size of the PV panel you'll be using and we don't know the size of the battery okay. you're using. Uh, so but if you're using if you're using a 200 um it's giving me if you're using 100 amp battery which is the most popular in the market you will need five batteries. Are you with me sir? Okay. Okay. Mm. So we want so to do the, the, what about quality of battery does it influence I mean, sizing also. It does. And uh, when we get to the software, the software has a column where it specified a lot of battery types in terms of other parameters, not just the, the, considering their depth of discharge, considering their, mm. uh, their other, other, other battery products. Yes. Yes. So, but the software is what, the, what will do that for you. Reaction to so, ambient. So, Yes, thank you. So the, okay. the software gives you more flexibility, and I mean, maybe, maybe, maybe that's why it's, 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 um, it's relevant. It gives you, there are some things we don't know. You know, when you buy a battery, there are other features of that battery that might not be spelled out, but, um, or you might be written on the, on, the, on the name plates of that battery, but you might not know the implication in terms of the lifespan, yeah. in terms of yeah. the cycle hour and everything. Uh, the temperature. The temperature, yeah, thank you. Yeah, um, other factors. Yeah. Every ten, every ten degree rise in temperature decreases the lifespan, decreases the output. So there are many. It is is uh, inexhaustive. Those those ones. There are many things other, and that is what the software does for you. After giving you not just the number of batteries, but it also gives you based on. You the said you said something. You you said something before, uh, Mister Mister Was. I'm hearing you, sir. Yes, sir. Your network. Mr. Okay. So let's move. Let's move. So now we've done our inverter for, for AC system. We've done the, the battery. So the next thing we're not gonna do is to size our our PVRA. So in sizing the PVRA, uh, the output, as we said yesterday, your PV is a function of your battery. A PV is a function of your battery. Um, the battery size, the battery um, capacity determine the number of PV. That's very instructional. It's good that we know that. Your battery size determines the number of PV you need. So using a peak sun hour of six, as we said, the required energy output, which is what we want to, to the required, the kilowatt hour we need per hour to charge our battery is 24,000 watt hour. So divided by this peak sun hour of six hours, that will give you the 4,000 watts. So it means that all the combination, combination of our PV systems, the number of our PV system must have the capacity to give us 4,000 watts every one hour. But then remember that is at standard temperature, standard, um, um, that's a, at a standard, uh, measuring time and time. Uh, what this thing means is that the temperature at that, uh, at that state should be 25 degrees centigrade. I think so, I think it's about 25 degrees or 10, okay? So any temperature below or above that standard will elicit you either upscaling your number of PV panels or downscaling it. Okay, so, okay, the theory, yeah. Uh, standard theoretical uh, time, uh, you now divide it by what we call the performance ratio, which is the PR. The performance ratio, as we said before, uh, is just like your, your load factor two, okay? It's more like your load factor, which is also more like saying that we are not sure that the, this is hour we are expecting will be up all the time. 
as well as other factors, as well as the other factors that are not uh, guaranteed. Therefore, we now assume a safety or a safer value of between 0 0.6 to let's say 0 0.8, okay? Which means, this, this, this thing are all in standard, okay? What it means is that the, the performance ratio can be between 0 0.6 and 0 0.8. And every region has their performance ratio. Like if you are doing this setup in the south, somewhere in Bayasa, Portacot, south-south, you use a lower performance ratio because sometimes you have cloudy conditions. You have uh, wind, uh, cloud passing. You have um, the temperature is not uh, uh, what you expect it. Then if you are doing somewhere in the north too, not necessarily because the north has more sunlight, but because of other factors, wind, wind factors, temperature factors, you can use a higher uh, performance ratio. So, but in the software, the software will specify based on uh, the, the study have been done all over the world to understand the performance ratio of every region. So once you key in the region, the software will automatically updates and pick up the performance ratio that is uh, acceptable or that is applicable to that region. So the issue of performance ratio might not be an issue, but then um, if, invariably you should know that it's, you cannot use one. So it should be between 0 0.6 and 0 0.8. So if we now use a performance ratio of 0 0.8, assuming we are doing it where all conditions are close to the theoretical condition, then it means that the size of the PV that we require will now be 5,000 watts. So 5,000 watts, once again, the number of panel you use now depends on, um, the, also depends on the, the, the size of the unit solar panel you are using. So let's say we are using, sorry, let's say we are using um, 250 watts panel, for instance. Let's say we are using a 50 watt panel. So if you're using a 250 watt panel, then it means that the number of panel we need will now be um, 5,000 divided by 250. Mm, that will be giving you like 20 panels, I guess. It's, yeah. Yeah, 20 panels. So this one is, once you've gotten this now, because this will also help you to size the area required to for this. So this is this already giving me an idea that for me to do this, um, I'll, I'll be requiring uh, about 5,000 square meters but I'll, you can still do the calculation. So approximately in my head, if I'm assuming that one, one square meter, which is a standard, if I'm, if I'm sure of getting... Uh, so engineer, where did that 4,000 come from again? That 4,000 from the actual PV size? It's 24,000 24, divided by six. Okay, okay. Yeah, the peak on hour of six. But remember what we said yesterday, if it is Nigeria, please don't use six. Maybe use something five. Engineer Vicent, you want to say something? Yeah. Okay. What I want to say, um, from my knowledge of um, this solar panel, I stand mm. to be corrected. Okay, sir. If we have got like 20 panels, mm -hmm. you know, for us to get our required power, you see that we... We have done our standard controller. So we've we designed the four components. So the next thing we now need to do is to go to the computer and then implement these things. So, so can we open our computer? There are so many sizes we're supposed to solve, but please, when you go back home, try, try these sizes. Try them. Uh, we tried some of them yesterday and it was, it was good. So let's go back to the software now. So I open my software. Uh, sorry, um, this PowerPoint uh, mat uh, material is actually part of the one you gave us. <laughs> yes, I've shared it. I updated okay. it. Yeah, I'll okay. go to the, that link and go okay, to the chat box too. I've updated it here. Okay. So let us go now. So, um, so let's say we want to design a standalone system. So let's um, put this our design in perspective. Okay, let's put it our design in perspective. I, 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 the, the software has the tutorial for everything, so don't be perturbed by the complexity of it. If you just go to the um, software, you will see the tutorial for pumping and for grid. But just try to lay your hands on it. So let's go to standalone. So click on standalone. 
Okay, it's giving me, I've already, uh, let me start a new project. So let me start a new project because I was doing a project before now. Okay, this is a new project. So if you open the system, this is what you see. Okay, so this is the interface of the standalone uh, design. So this is new. I mean, we're all engineers, all these things are new to us. So let me just explain to you how the software works. The software will expect you to impute variables. He will check those variables and do a pre-sizing. You will confirm the pre-sizing like this in line with what you've done. We have sized our battery, our inverter, our PV panels and everything. So the system will confirm and tell you, good guy, this is good to go. You've done a good job. After that, you now start to optimize. You start to create what we call variants. Here you see, you see variants. You start to optimize like what engineer recent asks. Um, how about if I use a 48 volt uh, battery? If I use a 24 volt battery? If I use 36 volt battery? Okay, because that battery configuration will determine whether you are going series, parallel, current requirements, and voltage requirements. Okay, so that is that. Remember that the current is a function of the intensity of the sun. So this function, the current is something that is variable. Then the voltage is fixed. The voltage is fixed. Every equipment, AC equipment uses 220 to 240 volts. DC equipment, you, like your battery, your battery should be using like five volts, I think so. Some battery use five volts, which is 10 watts, the power requirement of your, of your phone. So every equipment has the voltage requirement. So the software now, here you give, this is like details about the project and everything. Then under here is where you save new, you import data. Here is where you create variants. The big one now is this place. This is the parameters. So if you are doing your design, your focus is to design these four parameters. This four, after designing these four parameters, you, you can change the, you can, this optional. This optional means it is not necessary. It means you can change the horizontal, you can adjust the shading, you can adjust the economic evaluation, okay? Then the last one is where you run your simulation. After running your simulation, you can run advanced simulation. You can get a report, then you can get detailed results. You can get detailed results. So the major thing or your major focus should be main parameters. That is where you should be looking at. This is where you're going to impute um, the parameters of the system, okay? And those par par parameters are just for a number. So you need to work on four sections to do your design. The first section is your orientation. You have to define your orientation. The second section is your user needs, which is your load. What kind of load do I want to design? Then the system will not design itself for you. You see, you don't define the system you want to use. Sorry, after the load, you design the system. In the system, you specify the, pipe, the type of battery, the type of PV panel, the type of um, charge controller, and the type of um, inverter. That is what you do in the system. The system, will now, you now determine the losses, if there's any losses. So once you impute these things, the system will now run a simulation. You now maybe add one or two options, maybe shading or the angle of inclination, the angle of tilt, the peaks on hour, those small, small ones, you can put them here. After that, you run your simulation. So what I've established now is to inform you that this software is as simple as ABC. The software is not difficult to use. It is very simple. So let's start. So starting, I will put the name of my project. So what would be the name? Then my name will be home system, let's say. Okay. On that site, there is no site file. So the material data, I'm going to import the material data. So I'll go to database. I'll click on this icon here. You see material database. I'll go to that site and impute the geographic data and the meteorological data. Geographic, because the location, 
meteorology because it's a weather dependent design. Then I didn't tell you here, this blue area, it is where the system will give you the status reports. The system will give you a orange color. If your system is not well optimized, if you have not done anything, it will give you a red color if you have not done anything at all, if there's a danger. So I'll go to database, I'll click on database. It will bring up this fly out window, giving me other information. Now you don't need to do much here. We'll keep it simple and stupid. Kiss. I didn't see your, I didn't see where you clicked on data, database. Okay. Here, under Meteo Metro. files. Okay. It is blank. Where is the design? Castina, Brunu, what are the weather conditions? So I'll go to database and call up the data, if the geographic and the meteorological information, the weather information. The software has captured the databases all over the world for you. So once you specify a place, it will capture the relevant information that are applicable to that region. So I'll go here and say meta, meta file, meteo file. I'll go to geographic sites. There are other things to click. This is, you go to custom file if you have a file on your, on your own. You will go to format. So this one is to import and generate. So I'm not talking about import and generate. Then this one is display and compare. For now, I'm talking about the main. So I just want about the main. And the notes, if you want to read about the notes, the notes will tell you more about it. I'm not interested in all those things. So I'm just interested in the, let me go and pinpoint the site that I want. I'll click on geographic sites to give me a list of hundreds and thousands of sites. So I'll come here, I'll come here and I'll put Abuja. Let me assume that I'm typing this thing for Abuja. Abuja, of course, Abuja is Nigeria. So Abuja, Nigeria. It will tell me the cities that have been captured in Abuja, Nigeria. So um, Abuja is there, Benin City is there, Potakot is there. If you will agree with me, this is more like um, the areas that are a little bit different. Potakot means south south. Uh, some peak hour might be four hours. Abuja, some peak hour is five, is six hours, but play safe, use five. Then Benin City is at the middle, somewhere in the middle. So I mean, whatever. So let me use Abuja. So I'll click on Abuja. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> in my own, I did not see all the other cities. I only see Benin and uh, Port Harcourt, surprisingly. Okay, okay, you didn't put Nigeria. You didn't put Nigeria, sir. If you no, put Abuja. I didn't. Huh? Put Abuja, Nigeria. So that it will, it yes. will, it will, it will help the search. You That's what I... In the search, the city I put Abuja, in the countries I put uh, Nigeria, or I selected do, do Nigeria. Again. Do it again. It's quite surprising. Yeah, it's surprising. Maybe you install 6.8, sir. <laughs> Is this 7.2 you have? Ah, okay. It's yeah. pro probably okay. Yeah. okay. They All updated. Right. Yes. Okay. In the next one year now, they update your village, sir. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. It's possible. Yeah. Yeah, Sorry. I say there is no Abuja. It's not possible there's no Abuja. Sir. Abuja is the capital of Nigeria. How come you won't see it in the map? Something must be wrong. So now the details of Abuja will pop up. If you look at those details, those are, those are the information from Abuja. Uche. Sir. Uche. I'm hearing you, sir. I didn't say I have selected a site, which is the first step in uh, the design. I've selected a step in the design. So um, the system will now tell me the next thing to do. And what is the next, who, who among us is here? But no need to be here, maybe you don't have to be here so that um, you, you'll be able to focus. So when I choose the orientation, I click save and okay. The system now came up to say, Please choose orientation. So I have chosen the file, which is Abuja. Sorry. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. I did not. I didn't see the save where you said you saw save. 
After picking okay, after choosing, name, after choosing the Abuja, click import. There's an import something on your right. Click import and you see save. You click save. Ah. No, but if are you here? If you are here and it's telling you to choose, you are, you are, you are in order. Choose the plain orientation. No, mine is still telling no, me there. to choose to choose meteor uh, geographical uh, site. Okay, let me start again. Okay, here, here we go. Everybody's here. Let's start a new project. Abuja Designs. Can you guys see my screen? Go ahead. Okay, so under Meteor file, I click on database. On that database, I click on geographical sites. I choose, okay, put Africa for me, Africa. I choose Africa, I put Nigeria, wherever. I see Abuja here. I see Accra, I see Benin City. So I choose Abuja, or let me choose Benin City, see if everybody's getting busy with Benin City. So where's my Benin City? This is Benin City, Nigeria. So I choose Benin City. And when you choose Benin City, you, you double click on it, Benin, double click on Benin City. Just double click on it. Double click on Benin City. It will write Benin site name, Benin City, country, Nigeria, region, Africa. Are you here? Yes. yes. Yeah, double click on it. Then you click on import. It will give you something like this. You say yes. Yes. Okay. So that's what I did not do. Mm -hmm. Click import because you, you see, it, it gave you this for you to see that this is what you want. Then after you have accepted then, but, it, you uh, it's, it's a warning. It says it would override because I read it. So I said, okay, yeah, I don't ahead, want to ahead. override anything. See, okay. Then after that, you see, okay. You see that to give you a button called okay. So this is the property of Benin City. The wind velocity, relative humidity, the temperature of Benin, black, every, the radiation, everything is here. The parameters are here for Benin. And here, the radiation unit, you can choose the radiation unit you want. So for me, let me let us choose what per meter square. The parameters inside will change. What per meter square. And I'll click OK. To bring up this, I will accept it and say save. I will say I will say okay. You want to save again? I'll say okay. Just just kick him okay, 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 okay. Choose one particular one. Then to, to take you back to this screen. Then on this screen, you say close. They go back to projects. Benin City has appeared. So it says selected metro file, Benin City, MN72, blah, 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 forever. Then you click save. If you didn't click save, it will not move to the next process. So I click save. So I have saved. Are we here now? I'm not there. This one is just taking time. Okay, just stay with me. Let's go because we don't have that time. Let me just finish the because it's, it's a very simple something. Once we do orientation, we'll see user need, then we run. It's very simple. So just stay with me. The, the tutorial will be there for you to consume. But let me just give you one minute to come to here, just one minute. I think you need to just run it uh, for every one of us. Then before we start talking of individual, if not, we will get this in, uh, we'll miss it. Um, is, is anybody on the same page with Engineer Uche? So what I'm advising is that I don't think all of us cannot be running our individual software. There will always be questions that will distract That's us. That's what I'm saying. Is anybody in, on the same page with me? If we have one person that has... Yes, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm on the same page with him. I am. Yeah, I think they will, let's go, uh, then we can always come back. Uh, and then yeah, let's, let's continue with this. Yeah. I think so. Mm -hmm. I think so. And that's the ideal way to learn this thing.
Let's just run it through and you can give time for others to practice. So now and, and again it's recorded. You will have access to the videos to always yes. um, review at your own time. And not only recorded, BV system also have recordings. So now I've installed the meteor file. The next thing now is orientation. So I'll go to orientation. I click on orientation. So it's tell me choose orientation. I'll choose orientation. So under orientation, what uh, we learned yesterday, I'll choose my tilt angle. I don't know what tilt angle you want. Then I'll use, choose my azimuth. Remember what we said yesterday. If you're in the Northern Hemisphere, the idea is to tilt your solar panel to face the equator. Equator, yeah? And so if you're in the North, you tilt towards the South. If you're in the South, you tilt towards the, the, the North. Are we okay with that? Then the other one is what they call the azimuth. The azimuth is now the East-West orientation. Normally you teach towards, you teach from east to west. I think so. So the azimuth usually is between 15 and 25. It depends. So you can, if you Google, you can see all these things. So let's just choose 20, for instance. Okay. So if you watch it here, it has tilted towards uh, the west, since it's towards the east, because the sun rises in the east and sets in the west. So that's a common knowledge. Then here you choose yearly radiation. I think that's all you need at this point. Here, what is the fixed type? Fixed theta plane is the one. If it's a tracker, tracking system, you put whatever system that you're using, you include it here. Are we okay with that? No, so you leave it at theta plane and you click okay. Once you click okay, the orientation will not turn to green. Turning to green means you have fulfilled the requirement for that. So as soon as all four of them turns green, you have finished your design. So you can see that the first one didn't take us time. So we have done the orientation. We click on the orientation, we gave it an orientation, it's, it's, it needs, it's, it's been fulfilled. So the system now prompts you for the next thing to do. It says, user needs not defined, okay? So now we go to the user need and define the parameters. So I'll click on the user need. User need simply means the load analysis, which is the most important thing in all these things you are saying. So at this point, I would like to refer you back to our PowerPoint, this place. I'd like to refer you back to this. This is our load. So I'm going to impute this load to the software. So I'll come back to the software and uh, you can edit any of them. So the first load there is television and there are four numbers of television. So I'll come here and I'll write TV. What is the power of that television? It is 50. How many hours do we use in a day? Six hours. The second one is the fridge and there are only one number of them. What's the power rating of the fridge? 150. How many hour, hours do I use my fridge in a day? 12 hours. The next one is the light bulbs. There are eight number of light bulbs. And lights. Uh -oh. Eight numbers of light bulbs. And how many hours do they operate in a day? This must be security light. I'm seeing only eight hours. Oh, sorry, there are 15 of them. No, eight. Okay, the power rating, sorry. The power is 15. The next one is what? The number of hours for the light bulb. Okay, eight hours. Next one is the one standing fan. You, you left the space, so yes, I, I left on purpose because um it will confuse some of us because of the units. This is kilowatt hour per day. So this is for high intensity, some some stuff that, that goes load that load. Complete. Load, yeah. So fan. Okay. Is 40, yeah. I, the poor, I left the purpose, but it's just another variant. And um, how many hours is it running? Only one hour. 
again. Okay. I think that's all. Then here, you can put this. This one is, um, you put, there are some load that are consistent, that are constant in the house. Maybe some LED lights or some things. So if you have those kind of lights, you can say they run 24 hours in a day. You can just put one watt or 10 watt. There are some load in your house that they don't go off. But if there's none, I think I'll put zero. Excuse me, before you continue, under this power, there's various uh, units. Uh, this, what, 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 what are they different? For instance, you have one is uh, watts per app, kilowatts per day. What? Appliances, uh, appliances, per lamp. No, you know, I, I edited them. That place you see per lamp, it was lamp that was there by default. But me, I didn't send, I didn't follow their protocol. You didn't understand me, sir. So this lighting will have gone, will have been number one. No, I'm talking about the units now. That I'm saying, it is what pay appliance, what pay lamp. So my lighting should have been the number one. Okay. Mm. Well, uh, for my own okay, appliance, okay. For what about this one? Is, is it what average? Yeah. The, the most important thing is that um, at the end of the day, just make sure that you have your load here. That's just the, the main thing. Yeah. From my own end, I'm actually following it the way it is. You can enjoy, sir. Mm. But another day, get me 4,000 watts here, sir. I'm getting about 150,000, 250 watt hour per day. Mm -hmm. based on that, based on me following the way. Well, the idea is for you to know. Ah, yes, engineer, okay, you are the one that makes mistakes. You are putting 150 for switch. Okay. Oh, okay. Switch is 150. Okay, yes, I'm already close. I'm 4,400. So it's only my fan that's giving me. Okay, my fan is one hour. Daily use is one hour. Good, I got it. So I'm, I'm on 4,000. My idea is total daily energy requirement is 4,000 watts per day. So that is what I just want to get. So whatever you put here. Is you now if you like yeah, to say sorry, I think this unit on in power. I think the other means you are putting it in arms or in what? I'm sure that's what it means. What hour? What hour means energy? What hour means energy? It means okay. power times time. What we what we'll be saying. No, but you know, there's a slash there, it's different from uh... no, you know, it's a number of hours you operate it in a day. No, 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 no. I mean the power under the column of the power. You know, you have like 50. Okay, he said, he said, he said per appliance. No, that is pay like a unit. Okay, per appliance. Per appliance. Oh, oh, I thought it's AMP. That is fine, sir. No, no, AMP is AMP. AMP. Okay. So, what of, if we have the load more than this, can we increase the column to insert yes. more loads? Um, yeah, you collapse it. You can collapse it. You can collapse it. The idea is for you to have something here at the end of the day. And I think yeah, but you can you can add more columns, add more load. Actually, you can. Yeah, you can add more. Okay, so now you click. If you try clicking, okay, it will ask you to. Here you can see that it says specify hour, specify hour. So if I try to click, okay, to give me a warning, telling me that I should go and specify the hours. So I'll come here. These four objects I've clicked. It will bring it. This is television, fridge, light, and fan. So I need to specify those number of hours here. So to specify them. For instance, the television runs for six hours. So six hours means I'll come here, I'll click on this. I'll just drag here. I'll come to the second one. I'll click and drag. This is this is means this is the, it's more like the time that you're, the hourly distribution. For the fridge, 12 hours. So I can start here and go to 12 hours. You click and drag to do that for the lights. Okay, you must, click on, you must click on the boats, um, boats rectangle, back. Yeah, yeah, you know, this rectangle, you click on one. Then if you want to un unclick, you right click, it will, it will go off. Like I'm no, saying, left, 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 is it left click, left click, right, mm, left click is to yeah, highlight. 
you know, I'm saying, you know, there are two blocks, <laughs> one in front, one in behind. You have to click the two of them. Yeah, yeah, you... yeah, 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 I get it. So eight hours is there. This will help give you the demand pattern for each of them. So this is demand pattern for the two hours, but um, this is might not be totally correct because you need to specify at what point the light is being used. So it's, I'm doing it more like the load demand pattern. The fan is only one hour or two hours. So the fan is already in order. So that's all. So this is the demand pattern for the, for the sun, for the, for the lamp, for the fan. Okay, so if you finish doing this, you click okay or save. Let me click save. And then you click okay. It will not, all these ones will now say okay. It means everything has, has been acceptable and it's all okay now. And I can now click okay now. The second green has turned. User need has been fulfilled. Then the system also reminds you, please define the system. And the system is now showing red. Okay, thank you. The lower grid gives you the, assuming you have, um, uh, okay, I think it's, it's noted. Everybody's seen it already. Okay, so now you go to the system. So you click on the system. Okay, so in the system, the average daily need is four kilowatt hour per day. The requested autonomy is four days. We change it to say it's three. Then what battery are we using? 24 volt battery. It has given us, it has suggested to us capacity of our battery. So, and uh, the power. So this is, this is now what has given us. And if you come under this, um, what do you call it again? Um, tab. tab, tab, thank you, sir. If you come under this tab, let's start with storage. Now storage is what type of battery are you using? You come here, if you know the type of battery you want to use, Tesla, any, any, any more battery, any battery that's between, that is, uh, that is in the market between uh, between I think this is 20, 2017 or, or 2018. So when I tried it, this is Tesla. Tesla is advanced batteries. Tesla are newest batteries. So if you let us see the battery I saw was Volta. I don't know many of us are no Volta. Okay. So it is a 12 volt uh, battery and um, it will um, give you 100 ampere. But you can choose any one. You can, you can just play around Sony. Sony is 51 volts. Here has updated to 51 volts. So, I mean, this is now you, Rolls Royce, Panasonic. So you play around. Okay, this is 48 volt battery. So let's use 48. Eh? Lithium, lithium battery. Since 2017, I'm looking at the one that will be conquer. You know? So just choose the battery that suits you. So let me go back to my voter. Okay, then you now choose how you want to connect it. Now, um, this is not working. So depending on what you want to do, if you, if you change any parameter here, the system will adjust and tell you what you're doing. So this is, uh, the engineer asked question about parallel and series connection. So if you choose in series, so this is now here you play around. You play around, it's expected that you have done this uh, manually. Remember what I said, the system is not designing for you. You are the one doing the design. This is what the system will now do for you is to, to validate and model what you have imputed. So the input parameters has to come from you. So let me leave it at default, what it has given me, which is two. Though it's in red, it means that it's not well optimized, but let me leave it there for now. So it's giving number of batteries, it'll be 12 batteries, good. The battery is two volt volts. The global capacity, you know, it gave you 588, but it's not telling you that it's actually 600, which would make sense. The stored energy at 80% depth of discharge, this is where it is. The total weight. So this is now like manufacturer's specification because this manufacturer is in line, is um, has relationship with this company, whatever. They've captured some of the parameters that are needed there. Okay, 
So that is that. So it will give you further property about the batteries and everything, the controller and everything. You can still specify those ones. Then someone was talking about temperature and everything. Here you choose the temperature, um, average air conditioned, fixed air conditioned. You put it there. You have fixed temperature is there. And then to, to look at those parameters. Mm -hmm. And when you finish, you say, okay. You say choose module. Or click OK. System is not yet done. So the red didn't go off. So that means I need to choose my module. So I'll go to the next tab. So I've done with storage. The PV array module will come up. This is my teeth angle I have specified. This is what I've chosen. Uh, it maintains, remind me of what I'm using. Then Yungi Solar is chosen. There are many solar brands here. So you also choose the particular um, the particular one that uh, fits what you're doing. Then um, what type of module do I want? I will say generic. I don't know which one I want, Schneider, to bring out the, the configuration of the module for me and tell me the properties of the module. So um, at this point in the software, it's expected that you must have known some um, maybe type of module that you expect to have in the market, but you can play around and until you get something, something that will be good for you. This is 720 watts. I think that will be possible. Um, I'll go down and uh, you can choose all manufacturers. And if you choose all manufacturers, it means you have to come down here and then go through all of them. Um, knowing what you want. So this is 250 watts, 24 volts. Yeah, using 24 volts. So I will choose 250 watts. So it will give me the for configuration for that particular module. Um, so I will choose uh, the string number and then maybe Okay, same definition is still telling me that this definition is not yet optimized. I think we need then, to do the next step back off. Yeah, yeah, this one. So here, you list solar, I'm not choosing my solar. So 250 watts, I've chosen it. So I will now go to backup. So this, you see the, the instruction has gone off. Even if I click OK again, it will take me back to this. So I'll go back to backup. But I know that uh, some of them are just default. You don't need to put anything there. So if you want backup gen set, you put here, but this one, I'm not even designed for backup yet. But if you want to design a backup, you come here and put backup. And um, so the array is completed. I've chosen the array. They make a manufacturer, the blah, blah, blah. I've chosen the MPP uh, converter. Uh, okay. Yes, sir. That, that's the moment. Where did you see the 250 watt? Uh... Under Yungli Solar, Chinese Solar. Under okay. it's Yungli. Yungli. Okay. I specify Yungli, so it not gave me all the products by Yungli. Okay, okay, okay. If you choose another one to give you the product by those guys. And you know, why did you choose MPPT 1000 watts? Why? Um, that's a good question. I think that one came automatically. As soon as I use, I chose this um, what I need, I think it's, it's, it updated itself. It gave me what is, what is applicable to that. All I need to do is to put this, the kind of MPPT I want. I think this is choosing automatically. You can try it, sir. Okay. Yes. And that is what this software is. The software will help you. Some of those things in your team I was discussing yesterday. How do you know this? How do you know what fits this? Uh, but in as much as it's also good to use software, remember it's also good for you as engineer to know the first principle. Sorry, what is the MPPT of, again? Example, maximum power point. Maximum it is power. the system that optimizes, you know, this uh, IV, uh, IV curve. Remember we'll talk about IV curve, which shows based on the intensity of rain, the prevailing voltage. So the, 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 the equipment will help you to choose your best operating point where the current and the voltage is maximized. It's just that module that stays inside. You know, it comes to this together, it's, it's embedded with the inverter. So I'll now click OK. My system is now green. So I'm done with the design. So the other things you need to do is maybe losses, if you are well-versed, in terms of the losses, 
Uh, we didn't talk much about that, but these are something you can read in tests. You can read in tests and know the losses. So this one is giving us 20 as our loss based on the win factor. So here you do some adjustments, much more adjustments here and there. You know, one thing I know about software is that stay off what you don't know. Just leave it by default, except you know it. Engineer uh, Uche. Yes. Please, I have one question. What did you choose in backup? I didn't choose anything. I just left backup. I'm not designing for backup. There's no backup gen. You know, because if you go to backup, it will request you for, are you using gen sets? You choose if you're using a backup gen set. He uses backup gen set. So you now define that one. So I didn't choose that one. I just designing. Let's, let's try it. OK, let's try it. OK. He said, choose, up, choose a backup generator. This is what came up. So it has given me a, a suitable backup generator that is applicable to my design. Eh? 1.5 kVA or 3 kVA. That is the probable backup generator we use. Should I go with it? Yeah, but again, I, with I it? think I think we started with with the standalone. We didn't start. Yeah, so let's the, uh, so let's 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 leave it out. Let's yeah, finish our design, please. Yeah, we didn't start one. Uh, uh, now, gentlemen, as Mr. Chima said, yeah, it's not like you learn everything now. It's just for you to give you a head up, a head start, and to even introduce you to you know. I remember those days when we uh, when I did my master's. The, the lecturer told us that look, we've not taught you anything. But we've come to show you what you should know. And that word struck me. OK, let's continue. So I'll click OK. So my system says, ready for simulation. Then that's all, oh, gentlemen, finish. So I'll now run my simulation. So the simulation will run. So this is simulation result. So can you run your simulation one minute and tell me what you're seeing? They will now go to the So who has, who has done to this stage? I'll give you. Get to this stage in five minutes. So in that way, why when I was simulation, I just want to ask a question. I want to throw more light on that. Go ahead. You made mention of the financial model that is not going to be part of this training, but I thought uh, it's part of uh, what is being uh, in Bible uh, is being. Yachima, I'm stopping. I'm stopping this thing in the next five minutes. Yachima will take over that now. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, then I will share one material. See, gentlemen, I want I want to understand it. I will share material with us. Eh? That is so self-explanatory because of time constraint. Uh, okay. Maybe I also beg Jira Chima if Jira Chima can spare me the last twenty minutes so I can introduce us to this to the program. Eh? So when I introduce right. you, I'll share the software. Is the cost? Now let me tell you this: the, the cost was a independent thing before. With this training was in three parts: the renewable energy, energy efficiency, energy 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 auditing, and then cost and economic analysis of power project. That was a different cost, but we look at it and we say, look, let's collapse into two. But we also now found out that time is also a constraint. I've been issued with many three because of time factor. Three different trainings, 25 to, uh, three different weeks. We, we now decided to collapse it. We suddenly discovered that, I mean, we, we can't have a Zoom training for more than three hours, sitting in one place, doing one thing. It doesn't make sense. 
So, but I'll share the material with us. Thank you. So, this is the report. So, no, okay. um, yes, sir. I'm not going to analyze no. the report because no, we're all engineers. My, and okay, my system is still showing uh, yellow. Can I see what you have on your system again? On your PVRA, rather, PVRA. My, PVRA. Own system, oh. yeah, my own system is still showing yellow. So if you show if you show yellow, it it is wrong, but it, it is not well optimized. So I'll, yeah, I'll do that, sir. No, it, it, it showed it showed yellow, but it's telling me you're ready for simulation. Yeah, yeah, it means that uh, you are we have done the right thing, but it is not well optimized. So what you do, go back and choose. Ah, mm. uh, ah, uh, uh, okay. Let us let, let's finish. Mm, Someone need to pause. Okay. Okay. So now, what you do now is you go to reports. You click on reports. The system will generate the report for you. Like I said, in the paid version, the report is massive. So this is the PV report. It's giving me this report because I didn't pay. So they embedded their logo and everything on the report. So this is the project Abuja design. But if, you, if, you, if you're using paid one, those PVCs and all those nonsense will not be there. It will be your company and everything. So this is the report. I'm not going to go into it because uh, it is just what we've done. But as you know, some of this report is to show your clients that you know what you're doing. Yeah, that you've done the, you have done a good job. And um, I mean, that is what it is. OK, so it's page, page reports. Then you can click on tables. It will bring up table report for you. Yeah. Um, showing you. So which table, which table report do you want? Let me say energy use. It will generate a table for the energy use for you. So these are the, look at it, month by month. Are you with me? Then if it is um, whatever, whatever that you need to generate, to tell you everything that you need about that system. Are you with me? No, sir. How do you get it, please, sir? Oh, after you after you generate, oh, where am I again? Okay, after you produce your report on your left plane, you will see reports, tables, graphs, hourly graph, economic evaluation. Okay, this one we didn't put anything, we didn't put cost. So it will not give us much. So if you put cost in all these ones now, it will I doubt whether this one should be available for us in the free one. Maybe I'll go to PV module and put the cost, go to battery, put the cost. So at the end of the day, the system will be able to give me the economic analysis. So, so installation cost amount is no. Yeah, because I didn't put the variable for the cost. So this is for cost and economic analysis. So um, for me, I would say we, we, we can explore this on our own. We can explore this on our own, okay? I don't think I've explored it that much, but um, I, we have template, we have Excel template for that. So um, I prefer to use my manual design. Okay, so that is that. So any question? Uh, so, uh, concerning... Yeah, that, that your economic evaluation. When you're talking of price of item, how will mm. you how do you know where to get those prices? Do you have a particular um, mm. maybe organization you, you refer to where you can get like a, a centralized uh, database one can refer to online for the price of all these batteries? Maybe uh, unfortunately, unfortunately, I can say it's Google. So I don't have or. Oh. If you go for any of these sites, uh, you know, last year I was supposed to go for one intersolar conference in Munich. And that's part of what I wanted to do. So that you can get all these manufacturers, get their contacts. But you, oh, it's online, sir. You can get those things online. Mm. Yeah, it's online. It's, if you want to meet solar companies, type intersolar, intersolar Munich. It will, it will give you the list of the exhibitors. It's, mm. it's an easy, yeah, it will give you the list of the exhibitors and you can now approach them and ask for their requests and make the request from them. They can they will they will uh, they will they will give you their prices. I think it's a, something you can do directly with them because even if you get something online, 
it might be old price or old cost. So, and it's not beyond. It's beyond might, not be, it's, might, not, might not be reliable. Reliable, yes. So your your report is here. Your results are here. You can keep generating them. Some some of them are academic. Some of them doesn't make much sense. Some of them are just for, you know, just for to show forth that you've done a good job and uh, you know what you're doing. So I think that is all for now. So any question? Any question? So this is my system simulation done. System done, reports detailed, economic evaluation, everything has been done. So this optional is now optional design. I want to design the horizontal, the shading, and the other one. So that one is different. So the nearest thing I would have done is to save this thing as a variance. Can save it as a Uche or whatever. Eh? And then save it. It becomes a particular design for me. So I can do another one and save it again. And so on and so forth. So I will now exit. Yeah. Can we use these um, PVCs for PV diesel design? For what? PV diesel, PV diesel design. Uh, I think that's so, what it talks about backup. You mean a hybrid system? Large, no, without a backup, we have a large plant without a backup, and you just want to design a PV diesel system alone. Yeah, I think you can use it, sir. It's possible. Okay. Then yeah, there's another software which I okay. told off about uh, PV solve. Then I think PV solve is there. So any of the, any of them can work. That PV so. That PV, so where is it applicable? Is is just a rival to this company. Okay. It's just, uh, just they a do this. They do the same thing as same this one. Thing. Uh, but maybe cost. When you look at the cost, you know which one is cheaper for you and which one is, is more easier for okay. you to use. But my my suspicion, my suspicion is that this one is better. Oh, user user friendly. User friendly. Yeah, this one is user friendly. So uh, you can see all you need to do is to define these four items. That's your work. Define these four items around your simulation. So you define these four items, you need to impute parameters. See, ladies and gentlemen, software these days are meant to be simple and, and easy. So I'm not too surprised that this one is this simple and easy to use. But the output... So, you know, what, what are we looking for in the software? Now, when you do a simulation, there's something you, are, you, you want to see. You want to see whether your design will run, whether it will not give you error. If any of these things didn't fall in place, it will tell you you are wrong. So it is like a control. The software, and it will now give you some results and some details that you don't know. Like- yeah, uh, no, so that's, that's, that's what I'm saying. So we should be able to know, okay, yeah, because are, it's going to give us a lot of results. There yes. are some that are, that are useful, that are the critical ones that helps to, fact, to it, validate okay. our design. So which yeah. are those ones? Those ones are, are your, 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 yes, yes. Those ones are your inverter size and type. Because in your specification sheet, if you specify, if you type the inverter for your client, just tell him what the type. If he brings another type, you must make sure that that type is, is has the same configuration with the one he brought. Okay, the inverter, the battery, the charge controller, your PV type, PV arrays, PV configuration and many other properties of PV. So in fact, so these are the four things you, the software will give you. But these four things have subgroups. Like the inverter, it will tell you the inverter type, the amperage, the whatever. And then the battery will also tell you the type of battery, the circle life, the, and the temperature is supposed to operate. It will even give you the lifespan. Because if you choose the make the type, the the prop proprietary name, it automatically generates a cycle time for you, which is has to do with the life 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 lifespan. So the other small small information that you can you can take from here because what these people have done is to use the input parameters of every manufacturers and then see how they work together. So um, we just have the small economic thing to do uh, in Jirachima. Yeah, 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 I'm here. Can you do the project evaluation in 30 minutes? Yeah, and uh, just, you know, I will now yeah. share the. Okay, let me get, get um, why, why, let me share. Let me, for those who ask for, 
this is just overloading you. Let me not go and start sharing to you the economic evaluation um, PDF so that you focus on this. If not, but let me just show you what it's like. You now know whether you want to want, you want it or you don't want it. Let me show you what the economic is. So this is uh, energy training. Um, this is economic cost. And so you can see that it's in a different folder. These are the three module training we've been doing before. So we try to bring this one into this and this, but so far it's not working. So this is what it's like. What is it again? Cost and economic analysis. So I'm going to share with us. It's a free PDF material, but it will give you an idea of how to do economic analysis for your power projects. Sorry, I think I opened the wrong thing. Okay, yeah, this is life cycle costing. Let me see if I can do it and just give you an overview of it, what it's all about. And I think I can share with us. So what we'll now do is um, there's a training we run on cost, cost and financial analysis. We move this to there, but it's completely different from this course. So this is life cycle costing. Uh, here, you will get to learn about, um, hold on. Shima, hello. Yeah, yeah, I'm here, Uche. Should we do this cost analysis and let them read the project evaluation? Or which one do you think, what do you suggest? Okay, let's do this. Um, just, um, yeah, we, uh, for the project evaluation,